Welcome everyone uh, to Science Thursday with Brookhaven Lab. Uh, the purpose of Science Thursday is to engage our student and education community in STEM topics by meeting BNL STEM professionals and learn more about their work and the career path that got them to where they are today. At the end of the 45 minutes, uh, we hope that you have heard something that will spark your interest in a STEM career and perhaps even consider being part of the Brookhaven Lab community. Welcome, my name is Aleida Perez and I am from the Office of Educational Programs here at Brookhaven Labs. And I'm joined by my colleague, Diana Murphy, who will manage the Q&A portion of today's discussion. Before I introduce our today's guest, a few reminders. Uh, please submit your question using the Q&A chat section at the, at the bottom part of your uh, Zoom app. We will try to get as many questions as we can today. And if you have any issues uh, or difficulties with the video stream, uh, you can let IT know, uh, IT know uh, by making a comment on the, on the, in the chat section, right? So today I am joined by Brian Brenton. He's a mechanical engineer in the instrumentation department at Brookhaven Lab. He's just a new, recently new hire, by the way. Uh, Brandon join us, uh, Brian join us today to talk about his work at the upgrade to the Phoenix detector at the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider or REC. Okay, he's going to share a little bit of, of some of the work that he does uh, in the upgrade, a little bit of accelerators and career path as well. Welcome, Brian. How are you today? Hi, Lena. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure having you here today. Uh, we, before we talk a bit more about your career path, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're from Long Island. Sure. Yeah. So I grew up uh, on Eastern Long Island. I actually went to uh, Riverhead High School. Um, so, yeah. And from high school, uh, I went on to Farmingdale State College uh, for a couple of years and ended up transferring out of Farmingdale and recently um, graduated from uh, SUNY New Paltz with a degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, and uh, that was back in December of 2019. Um, and in March of 2020, I was hired as a mechanical engineer at instrumentation and mm -hmm. I've been working on the SPX project, so. Very cool. So you, you are, you are fresh, you're a newbie, great. Uh, so like I said, we will talk a little bit more about your career path because there's a BNL connection to that, not just, uh, you know, not just starting here uh, about a year ago. So we said earlier, Brian, uh, you are an engineer in the instrumentation department uh, and a part of the, the upgrade, the team that is doing the upgrade to the Phoenix detector. So for the audience today that may not be aware of what is a detector? What is it that uh, that piece of instrument look like and what does it do? And I know you have some slides to share to an audience. Sure, yeah, so I'll share my screen here. Um, so, as you can see here, uh, this is REC, uh, which is the, sorry, just here. So this is REC, uh, the particle accelerator. Um, and actually, you first start off over here in the LINAC, um, and those ions are actually produced over here and they're fed into the booster and then actually fed into AGS, which is then fed into RIC. So um, RIC actually consists of two beams that travel in opposite directions. And at certain locations along the detector, you have these uh, collision points, uh, Phoenix being one of them. So Phoenix, um, I like to think of it as a giant 3D camera that, you know, kind of like encapsulates that. and records these collisions between these uh, particles. So, um, you know, the particles that are being accelerated are, you know, ions uh, such as gold ions or, you know, other particles. And um, they're really, you know, melting the, the inner, the, you know, pro, uh, the inner protons and neutrons to form this quark gluon plasma, which uh, is what the you know, experiments, uh, the goal. So, so the detector, that this Phoenix, the Phoenix detector is seeing, right, those collisions and seeing what happens when we collide those particles. That is that what I'm hearing from you? Correct, yeah. So 
go on to my next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, this actually shows uh, the Phoenix uh, detector, and you can see that um, there's, you know, this is split into halves, but, you know, inside um, this cylinder here that I'm drawing are a bunch of different, um, you know, tracking devices that track the particles, um, you know, path and energy and, uh, you know, their, um, their size and mass. So they're uh, tracking the, you know, the energy that's given off by this collision and trying to basically, you know, reverse engineer it and get back to finding out what, you know, happened at the collision point. So. Yeah, it's a beautiful detector. That's one of the detectors that I will see in summer Sunday. And it was, I just found it very, very, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so when you think about it, that may be on your on your next slide. So um, so you we talk about the rig, and so what is the Phoenix experiment then? Yeah, so the Phoenix experiment, um, its ultimate goal is to measure, you know. The, or have a better understanding for this quark gluon plasma, which is formed when the um, neutrons and protons collide and they essentially mm -hmm. melt to form this, you know, perfect uh, fluid, I'll say, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you can see here, um, there's a, um, these are, um, you know, trajectories of the particles that come out of these collisions uh, and these different, you know, detector, uh, you know, components uh, all are responsible for gathering all this data uh, and being able to, you know, uh, compute, you know, what type of collision it was, you know, whether the particles hit on, hit, uh, hit head on or mm -hmm. hit, you know, or on, on an angle. Mm -hmm. So they're able to recreate, uh, you know, the type of collision that occurred. So, um, um, so. Brian, every single line that you see is represents what? Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so those represent the traje uh, trajectories of the particles, right? Um, and you can see there's almost like different, uh, you know, uh, layers here, which I'll say are, you know, the different, uh, you know, sub uh, assemblies of detectors uh, that are each responsible for different things. Like, um, like I said, some track the momentum while others track the, the energy given off. So, um, you know, those that, you know, can track the energy are called calorimeters. Um, and the, the trackers, you know, track the, the path, so. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you, you, you talk about the detector piece and, and you already talk about the relativistic heavy ion collider and talking about the Phoenix experiment itself. Uh, um, so I know there is the, there's, it's been an upgrade. Why is it the upgrade? What is it, uh, what is the upgrade about? Yeah, so, uh, give you a little bit of history. Phoenix mm -hmm. actually began back in uh, 1991 um, is when it was first proposed. And from 1991 to 2000 was, um, you know, the design, uh, you know, engineering and construction of uh, Phoenix. And um, then it ran from uh, uh, 2000, uh, I think it was 2000, uh, yeah, about 2000. 2016. Uh, yeah, from no, sorry, from 2000 to 2016, mm -hmm. experiment uh, was and stopped in 2016. So, um, but essentially, the upgrade to Phoenix is basically to take advantage of all the um, you know uh, advancements in technology and uh, accelerator, uh, uh, sorry, detector, um, you know, technologies that have been developed over the past 20 years. So. It's really going to give us a uh, deeper understanding of the quark uh, gluon plasma that occurs, uh, you know, at the collision. So mm -hmm. uh, you can think of it as like, uh, you know, Phoenix detector, uh, you know, gave us a, a, you know, a good understanding. But Super Phoenix is going to be um, uh, a better microscope. Well, let's say, you know, it's mm -hmm. going to be able to really fine tune, you know, those inner mechanisms of mm -hmm. what goes on. Is that what the S stands for, for Super Phoenix? Yes, yeah, so the S in Phoenix stands for Super Phoenix. Um, mm -hmm. I think it also has to do with the uh, importance of the strong uh, force that, um, that kind of binds those quarks and gluons together mm -hmm. inside the, uh, the mm -hmm. protons and neutrons. So. Okay. Um, 
do you have i don't know if you if if you can share but uh what are the specific what kind of change is some specific changes that are being done to the detector so yeah essentially um uh, this just goes back to the uh giving an example of the collision here but um yeah so <clears throat> the detector um this is the s phoenix detector which is really um a complete you know uh, takeover, a redo of the, you know, uh, Phoenix experiment. Um, there's not really um, a whole lot um, that is being used from Phoenix. Um, it's really an entire, entirely new detector. So the, um, <clears throat> um, there's, you know, something that worth mentioning is, you know, the, the magnet is actually taken from uh, an experiment uh, called uh, Babar, which was mm -hmm. done over at, um, uh, Stanford's uh, lab. So, mm -hmm. um, but essentially, all the new subassemblies and subsystems, the outer age cal, inner age cal, and M cal, these are all new detector components, uh, and the you know surrounding support structures are all new. So, mm. um, one thing that is being reused from uh, Phoenix is the, uh, the beam pipe, uh, the center beam pipe that actually runs through uh, the center of this, where the you know collision occurs. Uh, that's actually being reused in the um, uh, Super Phoenix detector. So, so Phoenix continued to live. Is that um, is that detector mm -hmm. the way that it's assembled and it's been built? Uh, is this intended to kind of fit where the old Phoenix was? Correct. Uh, sorry, what was that? So the, this detector that has been built and that is the new, the S Phoenix is intended to simply be in place to, to set where the old, the previous Phoenix detector was, is that correct? Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, like I said, a lot of the infrastructure um, is being used from Phoenix, such as, you know, the, the building and the, you know, um, the tracks that it sits on, uh, they're, they're being, you know, upgraded, uh, mm -hmm. but um. Yeah, essentially, it sits in the, the same location as Phoenix did um, in REC. So, mm -hmm. when uh, where are, uh, when is expected to be uh, complete or done? Yeah, so construction is uh, to take course over the next uh, couple of years, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so by twenty twenty two, they are expecting you know most of the construction to be done, and they they're you know optimistic optimistic to be up and running and taking data uh, by 2023 so this is coming up coming up one one thing that always impressed me about the this you know the, the experiments run at, at rick and phoenix and others is that they call that these are big collaborations right so you're building this detector but it's not just you it's not mm -hmm. bnl you have uh, others uh also involved in that process uh, can you tell us a little bit about that yeah of course um so yeah, there's, uh, you know, a wealth of uh, universities and, uh, you know, nations, uh, countries that, you know, support this project. Um, you know, uh, there's, um, you know, I, I've worked with, you know, uh, people from MIT and, you know, there's other people from Stony Brook. So uh, it's really a huge collaboration of, you know, scientists and researchers from, you know, all over the United States and across the world that, you know, are coming together to uh, bring their, you know, expertise and knowledge to, this uh, detector. So. Yes, it again shows us the science, science of, or can this kind of work is collaborative. Not, not one person or team can can do it. So, since you've been here, and I, since you've been here since last year, what is what is your role in this in this uh, in this process in this upgrade? Sure. What did you do? So, um, when I was first hired, actually. Um, I was one of my first uh, projects was working on the support structures um, for the um, for the entire detector essentially. So um, you can see this platform rests on uh, these tracks, and um, you know I, I was responsible for the design and analysis of the um, it's a hydraulic uh, positioning system that sits underneath the the um, detector here. So I'll show you. And what are specifically you were measuring there in those? Yeah, so th this was actually um, what I had worked on. And mm -hmm. this is um, the 
uh, there are four undercarriage you know, supports and they, they sit on the bottom and they are responsible for you know, moving the detector, uh, controlling its pitch, yaw and roll, you know, um, to be able to you know, accurately position the detector uh, at the center of the beam, of the beam pipe so we can get, uh, you know, um, run the experiment. Um, so this was one of the designs that I had worked on. And so uh, how long, so there's a question that just came in. How long do you think this upgrade will take? I think you mentioned something like that. But yes. can you be like, can let us talk how long this up, do you think this upgrade will take? Yeah, so uh, construction should be done, uh, I believe, sometime in 2022. And by the summer of 2023, they're looking to run the first experiment. So that means, you know, taking real data from real collisions, uh, you know, at RIC. What has the, because of the new upgrade to the detector, has, uh, has it mean, has, has the, uh, I would say the computer science be the data analysis, the, the data collection saving materials, you know, like the cables that connect to the computers and so forth. Those have to be, up, have been upgraded too as well. Is that correct? Yeah, I believe so. I be, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's been a, a ton of, uh, you know, upgrading to all the, you know, um, I'll say, you know, computational side of things mm -hmm. as well to, you know, process all this, you know, a, a tremendous amount of data being taken correct. in these experiments. So, um, one one thing I had forgotten to mention was that uh, so Phoenix um, these cl the, the collision rate of Phoenix was about uh, five thousand collisions uh, or five thousand I'll say events a second right mm -hmm. um, S Phoenix is supposed to have fifteen thousand record fifteen thousand events uh, per second so imagine it's uh, you know it's taking a lot more data than. Mm -hmm. than yeah, and a lot more data and you have to find, um, you know, where to store it and to mobilize all that data. Um, mm -hmm. It does take, um, it does take an effort and, and, and it requires, uh, uh, you know, time to preserve. Um, so, so you, so, so, so far you, 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 so you'll be looking at the hydraulics of it, right? Oh, there's a question that came in the chat about the data, those previous data has been completely analyzed from the uh, old experiment? That's a good question. I, I don't know if uh, the data has been completely analyzed or not. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I probably is a lot of this has been safe, that's for sure, over time. Yeah. And I'm sure there's probably, you know, even that, that data probably still safe and probably continue to be analyzed. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a very good question. I probably will guess, probably not all of it, but who knows? Who knows? Um, so besides, uh, so you mentioned that you'll be looking in the hydraulics and, and you'll be working on what other aspects of the, what other products are you being, in, uh, contributing, whether it is in the Phoenix or even, uh, even other projects within, uh, the, uh, relativistic and within, within RIC as well. Yeah. So within S Phoenix, um, I can show, um, this is the, the beam pipe that I had mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so this was something uh, I'm continu uh, continuously working on um, is looking at the uh, deflections of the beam pipe, uh, at, you know, with certain uh, support structures in place. So, um, you know, th this is a common program that we use here, uh, you know, called uh, ANSYS, and it's a, a great simulation software that, you know, allows us to, you know, analyze, um, you know, not only solid materials like this, but other, you know, fluids uh, and heat transfer and other, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, things that um, mechanical engineers look at. So um, this is um, developing um, support structures for this and looking at the deflections uh, at certain locations. So, so you do a lot of modeling before you actually go build is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, so a lot of these, uh, you know, screenshots you'll notice are, uh, you know, CAD models. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so th there's a ton of 3D modeling that goes on and, uh, you know, analysis before these things are, you know, uh, bolted together. So, uh, and so what you look, when we're looking here, you have this beam pipe, I understand that you, have, you are trying to model the, how uh, the cabling, is that here, you? Yeah, essentially, mm -hmm. so uh, this beam will, you know, deflect slightly under its own weight, mm -hmm. 
So we are, lim we, you know, we're constrained to the amount of deflection we're allowed to have, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can see that, you know, we're adding supports at, uh, you know, certain locations um, and seeing, you know, how um, that beam pipe re will react to those mm -hmm. supports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you doing any other projects besides this, the, the beam pipe? Um, with respect to SV, uh, S Phoenix, uh, no, that's really it uh, right now. Um, I've uh, started working on uh, ATF, which is the accelerator test facility. Okay. At um yeah at the lab and um they're doing a ton of uh work and they're adding in uh, uh new uh you know vacuum um, transport lines and stuff like that so I've been doing a lot of design work for them as well. Okay, all so this time before the before the actual building and upgrades do happen. That's 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 what that's the very cool and that's what what we do. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just going to kind of move a little bit into, into the, the, the path. Uh, I don't know if it's just lights done, right? Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, yes. I think that was the last one. So, so um, I've talked about your career path a little bit. So I mentioned, I, I, when, the, when we mentioned, you gave a little bit of your, of your, of your background here. And so uh, did you always know? I always ask this question because I always get asked the question at the same time. Did you always know that you wanted to be an engineer? Something that you said, oh, wake up, I'm going to be an engineer today. Or how did that come about? Um, not really. I mean, uh, so I, I would say I always had an interest uh, for math and, you know, science growing up. Um, I mean, I, I didn't know uh, specifically I wanted to be a mechanical engineer. I knew I would do something in STEM. Mm -hmm. um, but... I'd say uh, in high school, uh, my physics teacher actually recommended me the major and she kind of, you know, I'll say planted the seed, uh, you know, in my head to go on and uh, study mechanical engineering. So, um, which turned out to be, you know, a, a great uh, decision because I, I truly do enjoy it. So, Did you take any engineering courses in high school? Something I know some high schools do offer some electives in that. Did you, did, did you take them or is that something that came later? Uh, no, I didn't take it. No, I didn't take any uh, engineering courses. Um, I'd taken a lot of physics. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, um, our high school offered a uh, smart physics program, which we were uh, lucky enough to take in ninth grade. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and then I took, went on to take AP physics. And I, I'd say taking those AP classes, uh, you know, is, is in high school really, you know, helps you get a head start, um, you know, in uh, a STEM degree for sure. Yeah, and it give you a flavor of what that college life will look like. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I know you mentioned that you were, you know, you're you're a Long Islander, uh, you know, a local a local person. But yes. what? But there's a story to how you got here. So, can you tell us a little bit about how did how did you path? What was your path? What did what path did you take? You end I end up here. Yeah. So. Um... I was at the time I was actually transferring from Farmingdale to uh, New Paltz, um, mm -hmm. studying mechanical engineering. And um, uh, a friend of mine uh, works as a technician at the lab, and he um, introduced me or uh, told me about the Suli program, which is uh, the student under undergraduate laboratory uh, internship. Science undergraduate laboratory internship. Yes. <laughs> so. Um, and that, that was offered at the lab. So mm -hmm. that's um, that's how I used to got my foot in the door at the lab and, uh, you know, really got some hands-on experience uh, with engineering. And so. so you were a, a DOE intern, right? How long were you, for how many, for you, did, you, did you do the two semesters at Sully? Yeah, so uh, I actually uh, had a good relationship with my mentor and I came back uh, for Sully for a second uh, summer uh, and then, my last, uh, you know, semester of school, I came back um, during the summer uh, for SERP, which was another program uh, mm -hmm. that was at the time. So, uh, yeah, I was at, you know, during while I was in school, I interned at the lab for three summers, and you know that that experience, um, you know, was I'll say uh, critical to you know mm -hmm. developing me uh, into the engineer that I am now. So, and it. it so when you came back as an employee um, just a, about a year ago, do you come back to, to collaborate with this, with similar people that was through those SULI 
relations to relationship that you made that kind of made this a bit possible or that or, or it was or it was or, or it was not i'm guessing that it was something to 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 truly the relationship that you built may you know made you allow the connection so you know what's going on here at the laboratory that mm -hmm. then this job you know mm -hmm. then you you know makes it possible to yeah. to, to be yeah so my my old mentor um or i shouldn't say old I mean, I, i'm still in, you know touch with them uh but uh yeah he was he actually worked in the collider accelerator department um mm -hmm. which um is another department here at the lab uh, mm -hmm. and I still keep in touch with him. And when I was applying uh, for positions here, uh, you know, he was, you know, keeping me updated when new positions were posted and mm -hmm. uh, in addition to, you know, checking online. But um, yeah, I've actually, you know, worked with him uh, on with on certain parts of S Phoenix. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. kind of, you know, how I start my work started off uh, when I got here. So um, I was still working, I'll say, with uh, or collaborating with him uh, when I first got, you know, hired. Um, That's very, very cool. So I, I can sense that your experience, your, your, your internship experience was a positive experience. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it really, um, I'll say, you know, got my feet wet, um, in terms of engineering. Um, I, was able to you know learn a lot very quickly mm -hmm. and at, at certain times you know more than I had learned in school um, mm -hmm. and um, those, some of those uh, you know tool tools and skills that I'd learned um, uh, during those internships are you know things that um, I still use today you know yes. um, and yeah so and you're a mentor now right yep that's correct I'm mentoring two high school students so. mm-hmm Mm -hmm. So it's it's almost like you know in a full circle in a way, right? It's yep. uh, it allows you to 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 uh, you know, to to apply the things that that you learn from your mentor, and now you had the opportunity to give to others also what what was given to you also in terms of mentoring, and and the development of the on the next uh, generation of STEM professionals. So so yeah, thank you for taking a high school student this summer. By the by the way, thank you. Um, there is a question. I'm not sure if you're able to answer this one or not, but I'm going to ask anyway. Um, can 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 a recent grad in physics degree transition into engineering position? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't see uh, why not. I would, you know, I would say that um, there's there are some uh, aspects of engineering that uh, you know cross paths with physics, so you'll you'll definitely you know. Uh, you know, be competent in that um, aspect. Um, but you can always go on to pursue a master's in mechanical engineering, which, you know, will give you the tools, the, the tools that, you know, you may be lacking. But um, I'd say, you know, absolutely. If you're, you know, a physics uh, major and you want to go off to uh, apply for engineering jobs, um, mm -hmm. you, you can definitely um, do that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's some over, like you said, some overlapping into the, uh, mm -hmm. into the various courses that they take. If you have any questions, you're welcome to put them in the, in, in the, in the chat. So I, I know that you were here, you know, through our programs uh, for, for science. So can, can you say something a little about the importance of mentors in the development uh, in, in, in how important the men mentors are and can be in the development of the next generation of STEM professionals? Sure, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, just personally, I wouldn't uh, be, you know, the engineer or the person I am today without the help of my uh, mentors. You know, he helped me not only, you know, guide me through, uh, you know, work, um, you know, an internship and engineering experience, but, you know, they're also there to, you know, for, uh, you know, a, I'll say a greater purpose, you mm -hmm. know, to help, you know, guide you along the way in career choices or other, you know, decisions that you may need to make. Um, so, yeah, I mean, their importance, um, you know, is, you know, it plays a, a huge role in, you know, developing, I'll say, you know, the future uh, uh, generation STEM mm -hmm. uh, students. So. Mm -hmm. And I know we have some high school students in here and, in, and college students as well. So 
if what kind of preparation a high school student should you know if he wants to apply to this kind of uh, either engineering school or kind of this or this kind of pro or some similar to what you did, what kind of preparation you a high school student should should think about coming out of high school or into college? Yeah, um, one thing is um, you know whatever uh, you know access to uh, I'll say you know. Uh, computer software programs or anything, uh, any of your interests, um, you know, really try to, you know, dive in and um, get an understanding of, you know, how to use certain programs. So like mm -hmm. for engineers, you know, gaining a little bit of experience with CAD before, you know, uh, you come here or, or, you know, if you're a computer science and, you know, you need, uh, you know, messing around uh, with coding or, you know, ro robotics or something, um, you know, just getting, uh, you know your hands dirty with some of that stuff mm -hmm. will really you know help prepare you and i mean and of course you know um you know sticking to your education and your academics you know focusing on uh really you know understanding the fundamentals and uh you know like any parent would say you know keep your grades up as well so <laughs> yeah but i like that you mentioned the the coding you know the computer software because i think sometimes those things get lost and particularly in the schools is not uh, some of them is not taught in many of them. So knowing uh, the CAD software or computer language is always of, of, of benefit of, of importance. Um, I know that we have, um, if you have, you know, I know that um, uh, if the audience wants to put any questions, but if not, I think we we'll, let me ask you this question. What advice, if anything that the audience have here heard you say about, um, about you know, do work your experience, you work at Phoenix. If any advice that you, they don't want to give to the audience that you wanted to take home with them? Um, yeah, I guess uh, just really, um, you know, try to discover your, you know, interest or, you know, what sparks you, what gets you, um, uh, you know, motivated, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and really try to, you know, follow and, you know, create a, a career um, out of that, right? Um, so, like, you know, if, you know, for me, you know, engineering, I like designing, I like creating. Um, mm -hmm. So it's um, when when you do something that you actually, you know, enjoy doing, uh, you know, the, the job it feels less like a job and feels mm -hmm. you know, more like, uh, you know, um, a hobby, I'll say, or you know, <laughs> career. So, um, but I mean, work is still work, right? But um, with that being said, it, you know. It really can make a difference uh, if you you know enjoy you know the work that you're doing. And, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's important that that you uh, love. You know, do you have a passion for what you do? Mm -hmm. If there are no questions from the audience, um, okay. So I think we are going to say thank you, uh, Brian, for your time today. Uh, we appreciate learning about the work that you're doing at Phoenix. You've been here for less than a year. So this is, you know, about, about a year. Uh, yeah, this is a, year. in October will be a year. Look at that. Oh, it, not, that's just, just over. Oh, Sorry. Just yeah. over a year. Yeah. And so this is just the beginning of, 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 uh, of a journey for you. I mm -hmm. hope that you can stay here for more than a year or two, maybe 10 or 20 or even forever. Who knows? Right. Yeah. But at least to, for you to see Phoenix go into its plate and, and see the first collection of data uh, that, 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 that will be arriving from the experiment. We appreciate that, the work. And thank you to, to, our, to, our, to our viewers and thank you for sharing with our students and educators your experiences. Uh, we'd like to thank Brookhaven National Laboratory for hosting this event today and encourage you to check out our programs. Uh, Diana was able to put a link to the, B, to the Office of Educational Programs website, webpage on the chat. Um, thank you very much. Please stay safe and we will see you next time.